Let's start. Um, uh, my name is Johan Hovold, and I work as a consultant uh, doing current work, primarily uh, with embedded systems. I am the maintainer of the kernel's USB serial system, which is why I take an interest in the topic of today's talk. I also maintain Graybus together with Gray Core Hartman. Graybus, for those who haven't heard about it, it's the application layer for Unipro that came out of Google's Project Aura, the attempt to build a modular mobile phone. And today I'll talk about the serial device bus, which the executive summary being aims at making uh, serial attached devices fit better into the Linux device model. So UART and NARS 232 has been around for a long time now. It's at least since the 1960s and a few years before that. Um, it's still a common interface, especially in embedded system for uh, Bluetooth, NFC, radio, uh, GPS devices, and so on. And the kernel provides a uh, abstraction for the serial connection itself, but a device is more than just a communication interface. You, you have associated resources like GPIOs and interrupts and so on that you need to be able to manage, uh, not least for power management purposes. And unless you want to implement your driver entirely in user space, the kernel support so far has been uh, more or less limited to uh, so-called line discipline drivers, within quotes, because they're not really drivers in the Linux driver model sense. And they had the drawback that they must be configured and initialized by user space. So brief outline of the talk, I'll start with uh, giving a high level introduction or overview of the TTY layer and discuss those two options that have previously been available to us to write your driver entirely in user space using line discipline drivers, discuss some of the drawbacks and problems associated with those. Before introducing CRDEV, uh, talk a bit about how it's been implemented, uh, the driver interfaces that anyone wanting to drive, uh, implement a uh, CRDEV driver uh, can use. And after that, I'll talk some of the limitations that CRDEV has today and point out some issues for uh, future work. So the TTY layer, uh, ultimately it provides this character device to use the space, abstracting the underlying serial port hardware. Uh, beneath the character device we have the line disciplines, uh, which is an entity abstraction which deals with any kind of IR processing. This is where uh, the canonical uh, input mode, its line editing facilities is implemented. Uh, it deals with echoing, error handling, parity framing, um, but also things like uh, emitting signals on various input conditions. Beneath the line discipline, we have the TTY port layer, which is a, where the input buffering currently is implemented in the, in the kernel. And this is also a kind of abstraction layer for implementing common POSIX semantics. For example, when opening a port, you need to raise the DTR, RTS uh, lines, and so on. And beneath it all is the actual TTY driver, which know how to speak to the actual hardware in question. Um, in this picture, I've uh, divided the TTY driver into the TTY driver core bit and a lower level driver because this is usually how it's uh, implemented. The serial core um, would be the TTY driver or USB serial core, whereas uh, an OMAP UART driver or the FTDI driver would be an example of a low level driver. And as I said, this is a bit of a simplification. Uh, in reality, there are some the line discipline actually calls down directly to the TTY drivers as well, but for our purposes, this is uh, sufficient. So the user space drivers, you could implement your driver entirely in user space using the default line discipline. Uh, this means obviously that your description of your system, your hardware needs to live in user space as well. The application needs to know which port to open, what line speed to use. And if you have, for example, a simple reset line app, uh, enable switch, um, you could use, uh, still do that in, in user space because GPIO lib provides uh, an, a, a, an interface for, for user space to access. But when you get to things like regulators and clocks, they don't have a representation in user space there, then you won't be able to, um, to implement your driver in user space. Uh, obviously, you cannot use the uh, kernel's power management facilities. Uh, you need to implement your own. You need to deal with things like system suspend notifications, which, uh, arise from, from user space to start with. Uh, wake up interrupts is another issue because uh, you cannot specify an interrupt as a system wake up interrupt through GPIO lib currently. And obviously you cannot use the kernel's infrastructure for firmware management. So, and 
for those reasons, and also because you usually want to interact with other kernel subsystems, you need to have your driver living in, use, in kernel space. And that's where the line discipline drivers come in. Uh, these other subsystems could be Bluetooth subsystem, input, NFC, and so on. Um, and the line discipline in usually then registers further class devices, which is the actual interface with which um, user space will later use to access the hardware. Um, this means that you need a user space daemon to initialize the port, switch the line discipline, and to actually keep the port open because um, it's only while the line discipline is open that these devices are accessible. So we have these uh, commonly known um, daemons like LD attach, input attach, and ACI attach which is being replaced now by Bluetooth Attach. Um, in comparison to user space drivers, this means that the kernel firmware infrastructure is available, but there are still other issues with power management and other resources like clocks and regulators. So a quick example here, uh, Bluetooth. Um, this is essentially what the ACI Attach daemon needs to do. Uh, open the port, configure the baud rate, so on. Uh, switch the line discipline, and in the Bluetooth case, you also need to specify which Bluetooth protocol to use. And it's only when this last IO control is executed that the actual HEI device is, uh, becomes available for user space to use. So, uh, graphically, we have something like this. When the system is booted, uh, we have the lower level driver um, being bound to its device, typically described in, hard in firmware. So the character device is available to user space. You need to first run your uh, HCI attached daemon application one here before uh, the line discipline is switched and the class device becomes available for, for example, HCI config to actually um, start up the, the Bluetooth device. So what's the problem here? Um, first of all, the description of what's going on, description of your hardware, uh, what is connected where and how, lives in uh, user space rather than being encoded in firmware. Uh, firmware being then typically device tree or ACPI. And this means that you don't get any automatic discovery. We need to launch these user space daemons before we can actually access the, the Bluetooth device. And because the your detached device doesn't have a firmware description, we have a problem with describing and looking up these other associated resources. GPIO uh, interrupts could be for reset, wake up purposes, uh, pin control, and so on. And obviously, this is uh, a problem for power management. We need to be able to control such resources. Uh, and a further issue here is that the port is always kept open. So depending on how the underlying uh, TDY driver has been implemented, this may prevent the um, port device, serial device, from going into runtime suspend. Firmware loading is available, but Firmware loading typically involves uh, toggling a reset line or something like that, which then also depends on this fact that we cannot access CPIOs. So that's the background, and that's why uh, the part of the problem that Seradev uh, is helping us solve. So Seradev is a new bus. Uh, it was implemented by Rob Herring of Linaro, um, and it's a generic bus for your detached devices. Um, I think the immediate aim here was to replace the TI shared transport driver and its uh, vendor-specific UIM daemon. But it's also based on earlier efforts, um, typically driven by power management uh, concerns. Uh, there was an example of a uh, GPS uh, device which needed to be powered on, and you didn't want to have it powered on unless the, the GPS daemon was running and the port was open. Uh, typically, those efforts aimed at adding this at the serial core layer in the kernel rather than at the TTY port layer. So that's part of why that those efforts never got anywhere until uh, Rob and others uh, picked up the thread. Um, the bus itself was merged for 11, but there were some initial uh, problems with how it hooked into the TTY layer, uh, lifetime issues that. Um, so, so, you needed to, so that, that connection needed to be reverted and it was enabled only for serial core uh, in 4.12. So Seradev uh, introduces a new um, bus type. It's named Serial, uh, not Seradev. And uh, the concepts of Seradev controllers and Seradev devices. Uh, the Seradev devices are also known as clients or slaves. And it's basically because devices is such an overloaded term. It may sometimes be more clear to refer to it as a client device or slave device. And I will be going back and forth between these uh, three as well, so just be aware of that. Um, there is only one TTY port uh, Serative controller implemented in the kernel today, and it's the TTY port Serative controller. 
so that means that sometimes we wrongly identify it with Serodiv itself. The, this controller works as follows. So when, so when a TTY driver is registering its ports, um, if there are any clients defined, then a Serodiv controller will register instead of the typical uh, character device. And the clients that are described by firmware, they're currently defined by device tree, but in 4.15, we will have ACPI support as well. So if we return to the example with Bluetooth, um, we have something like this now. As before, when the, the system starts, uh, we go out and parse our device tree, we find that uh, we have a serial port described in firmware, we bind the OMAP serial driver in this case, it goes out and registers uh, with the TTY layer, which we now call into uh, Serative Core and go out and look if we have any serial attached devices to find in firmware. If that's the case, we'll register a Serative controller and a Serative device client instead. And once the Serative client is bound to its driver, um, it can register the HI device so that once the system is booted, the Bluetooth device is already accessible and we can run HI config immediately. So we compare it to the old situation here. We've done away with the, um, the daemon, application one in the, in the right end there. We're bypassing the line discipline entirely and we no longer have a character device representation in user space. This also means that the port is no longer being kept open unless the uh, serial client actually needs to have the port open. And um, most importantly, the serial client has a firmware uh, representation in firmware. So we now have solved the problem of uh, describing um, these associated resources that the, the client may need to use. So uh, some bit of details on how the TTY port control has been implemented. Uh, I mentioned before that it, um, it's the TTY driver's responsibility to, to actually register these controllers, and that's been done by hooking into the TTY port register device um, helper. So when there's a client defined, this will register a controller in the slave instead of the TTY class device. Uh, and the TTY port struct in the kernel has been amended with two new fields here. It's um, TTY port client operations and client data. And the default uh, client operation simply forwards data to the line discipline, but when we have a serial controller uh, registered, it will forward it to the, to the slave device. And in the other direction, uh, uh, the controller interface is implemented by using these TTY operations that I mentioned in the beginning. Device tree bindings, um, for a serial attached device, uh, um, a device tree serial attached node is simply a child of a serial port node. And the only requirement is that it has a compatible property. Um, there is a uh, max speed property defined as well, it's optional, and it's not typically supposed to be, it's not supposed to be used to specify the actual baud rate to be used, but rather to uh, lower um, the maximum baud rate. The driver is supposed to know how to, what capabilities the hardware has, and, but it's only if, if there are issues with the actual physical board that you can cap that max speed by using this property. And this is also where you would specify your GPIOs and clocks and so on. So in this example, it's a, it's a Bluetooth node. It's being defined uh, as a child of the UART1. It uh, has a TI-compatible property and GPIO and clock. And in SysFS, this would show up as something like this. We have here uh, two um, serial ports. Both are being driven by OMAP UART. The first one does not have a child node in device tree, so that, there we get the, the uh, character device being registered class device, uh, and in the other case, we're using the snippet from the previous slide. So we end up with a uh, serial controller, serial zero. It has one slave, uh, serial zero dot zero, um, dash zero. And it's only when that driver has been bound uh, on the serial bus, the serial bus, that the HEI device uh, shows up in the system. So, um, if you want to write your own serial driver, this, um, the interface that you're going to be using resembles that of the line discipline operations, which is fairly natural because we're replacing the line discipline. So we have uh, functionality for opening and closing a port, changing terminal settings, writing data, um, changing and, and reading back the modem control signals, uh, 
um, and two callbacks for uh, when you have incoming data and when there is more room in the outgoing buffer. There are a few additional helpers uh, implemented around this, but this is in fact the, the basic set of, of primitives that you have. Uh, open, close, set, baud rate, enable hardware flow control, writing a buffer, waiting until it's been sent, uh, flushing and changing the mode and control signals. The thing to note here is that uh, there is no right serialization enforced by uh, serial core. This shouldn't be a problem. TTY drivers are supposed to deal with the concurrent uh, calls to write, but since the character device implementation typically takes care of that, they may not have been fully tested, so you may run into some problems there. Uh, another thing is that there is no operation enforce, uh, ordering enforced by, by serial core at all. The only uh, ordering uh, that's been enforced is actually that you cannot write a buffer before you've opened a port if you're using the TTY port controller. But there's nothing preventing you from calling into set um, terminal settings before you've opened a port and so on, and this will uh, probably break some serial drivers. And all these functions except write buffer, write room, uh, may sleep. In the other direction, uh, we have a couple of call callbacks. Again, it's the receive buff and write bu uh, wake up callbacks. Um, receive buff is called uh, in work queue context, so you can sleep, um, and it should return the number of bytes that the serial client has uh, accepted and processed. Write wake up, typically called in atomic context, so you cannot sleep. Uh, yeah. um, so, a quick example of what a serial uh, driver may look like. Uh, you have a serial device driver struct you need to fill in. It has an embedded device driver struct as usual. You set the name, you set your match table. This is where you specify your power management operations uh, so you can implement proper power management. Other than that, it's just a probe and remove function. And we have a convenience macro for defining a modular uh, slave device driver. Uh, sort of, uh, a probe function would typically look something like this. Um, You'd allocate your private data as usually. You now have access to a firmware description, which means that you can use uh, calls like clock get to go out and look up uh, a clock resource or access the OF node um, directly. You'd store a pointer in your private data to the serial device that you can use in your class device callbacks and set the driver data uh, to this private data. Uh, the important thing to note is that you need to set your client operations. This is the callbacks for incoming data, write wake up before you open a port. And if your application, if it makes sense for your application, uh, you would open your port here as well before registering your class device. So Serdev gives us, um, solves the problem, uh, but there are still some things to be implemented and some, some caveats for using it. As I mentioned before, it's serial core only, and that has to do with these lifetime issues I mentioned in the beginning, but primarily it's because uh, Serdev doesn't have any hot plug support at all. And um, this was simply not a use case uh, for the people who implemented it, so it was something that left to be decided for later. Um, and I'll get back to hot plugging in a minute. Um, it's also single slave only. Uh, there's currently no support for any kind of maximum protocols or using RS485. Um, two other issues to watch out for is that there is no input flow control implemented. I said you can enable hardware flow control, uh, but it only works in the outgoing direction if you're using something like auto CDS, because there is no pushback implemented. So if your client can't keep up, uh, data will be lost. There will be no um, pushback to the underlying TTY driver, which can uh, lower the RTS signal, for example. Um, also, since we're not doing any input processing, you don't have access to things like software flow control, parity framing overrun errors aren't propagated up, and you don't have any break signaling. Serial hot plugging um, is currently implemented using uh, TTY hangups and file operations in the TTY layer, but since Serial doesn't use any file operations, um, we're, this, this simply won't work. Uh, so this will require some changes to TTY driver to basically uh, have a callback to quiesce IO, uh, flush out any ongoing operations before you can uh, deregister the, the client. Uh, and this is, as I mentioned, a part of the reason for the initial revert. We can't have um, serial dev enabled for uh, USB serial until this has been solved. 
Uh, obviously, we still have PCI hot plug and some PCI um, devices. You could actually rip out your, your PCI card and you will trigger these issues, but it's, it's fairly unlikely you will try that. Another issue with uh, hot plugging is that we don't have any um, way of describing these uh, dynamic buses currently. Only USB has some kind of rudimentary uh, device tree support and um, for specifying basically static things, like um, if you have an Ethernet controller or something that's connected over USB. Uh, we could be able to use device tree overlays, but obviously we then need some way to get those into the kernel, and that's uh, not available at the moment. And as someone um, pointed out when I had this talk a few weeks ago, there is some devices are entirely self-described. We have an example here of a HDMI CC uh, USB device, uh, which pre presents itself to the, to the user space or to the kernel uh, really as a, an ACM device. It's handled by CDC ACM, but you need to run the input attached daemon to uh, actually be able to speak the protocol, Pulse protocol, which would then um, in turn register a dev CC device that you can use to turn on and off your, your TV, for example. Uh, it should be possible to pass just the matching data from um, the CDC ACM driver, but this should be solved in a generic way, which probably means that we still want to be using something like overlays, And but in this simple case, it would be enough to simply pass a compatible string to CIRDEV to be able to do the, the final matching. Some smaller issues. Um, there is no uh, line discipline uh, allocated. Uh, sorry, there is still a line discipline being allocated. Even though we're not supposed to use it, we are allocating it, and it's actually being called into. TTY layer is um, complicated, and no one knows exactly what's going on everywhere. And it's easy that you have some case you haven't thought about yet, and oops, you got a call back. Um, another thing is that the serative controller is always being registered. So uh, for every port in your system, there will be, during boot, when it's probed, uh, a controller will be registered. Only then will we go out and look in the firmware and see if we have any child nodes. If we don't, we'll deregister, deallocate, and the character device will be registered. So that's inefficient, at least. Um, obviously, you don't have any character device. Um, some people have been a bit surprised about that, but it's, it's really a feature more than a, than a bug. Um, the operation ordering I mentioned you need to watch out for. Another thing is that um, we don't have any bus power management. For example, runtime power management isn't enabled for the controllers, which means that the client uh, runtime PM status won't be propagated up the tree. This shouldn't be a problem because it's essentially equivalent to having the ignore uh, ch ch children um, flag set because you, you really want to have your port be able to go into runtime suspend independently of your um, child devices, and then when you're doing I.O., that's when you bring up the power on the, the serial port. Uh, there's also a possibility of um, running into some issues with code applications, the backwards compatibility, because we have a number of line disciplines which can now be converted over to, to Serdev, but um, we still need to support the line disciplines for backwards compatibility reasons. Um, for Bluetooth, this has amounted, uh, resulted in the fact that we copied part of the implementation from the line discipline implementation, and we now have two competing implementations, which may need to be unified. Um, there are some naming inconsistencies to watch out for. For example, the bus is actually named Serial uh, rather than Serdev, and it's the Serdev device client slave being used uh, interchangeably. Another thing to watch out for, uh, kconfig. Uh, we have two symbols for Serdev. It's both to enable the bus and Serdev core, and to enable this particular TTY port controller. And you really cannot use Serdev or any of these Bluetooth drivers, for example, that are merged uh, without having both enabled. But the thing to watch out for here is that, that the bus is, can be built as a module where whereas the TTY port controller depends on TTY, which is compiled in only its yes or no Boolean. And this means that this option won't even show up if you, if you choose Serdev to be modular. And since it's the only um, TTY port controller, uh, Serdev controller uh, really ought to be uh, defaulting to yes, and that will change starting from 4.15. 
So, uh, current users of this, we have uh, three Bluetooth device drivers merged and a library function, again, it's mentioned based on HIL disk. Um, it's for Broadcom, TI devices, and uh, Nokia. And there's one Ethernet um, over UART drivers, man, for Qualcomm chip, I think. And one of these drivers, then HIBCM, I uh, want to say a few words on that. It's basically a sort of precursor to Serdev uh, because it depended on some power management hacks uh, which relied on having a child node, a child platform device of the, of the UART uh, device being described in ACPI or platform code. Um, this device would be the one that has associated uh, GPIOs and clocks, and it would be when the platform device was probed, you'd uh, register um, the platform device in a global list in the driver, and then when you get your HI callbacks to the sibling device, really, it would go to this uh, global list, match on the parent, we have the same parent, and then call into the sibling device. This is a layering issue at best, it's a hack, but it's the kind of thing that you were forced to do if you wanted to implement power management before Serdev. Um, now this um, driver is gaining, has gained. Uh, Hans de Gerde has done some, uh, some work adding ACPI, proper ACPI and power management support for the Serdev version of this driver, and it's been merged for 4.15. But there are some possibilities that we run into regressions here. One thing being if you haven't enabled your Serdev controller, uh, you can still use the line discipline, but your power management won't work anymore, and it's, you, you can't really tell. Um, you can still access, there's still a chance that you can access the Bluetooth device, but power management won't work. And we just discovered as well that the HCI Intel has copied these kind of hacks, and it doesn't have any power management support for Serdev yet, so that will definitely break if you have one of those devices using ACPI with HCI Intel. Um, stuff that's uh, coming, so I mentioned ACPI support was merged. It was merged uh, only four days ago, Friday, um, by Frederick Denise. And the risk here is that we'll have some issues with HEI, BCM, HEI, Intel, but it's been decided that this is the way forward, so we'll deal with that when it happens. Um, there's a patch that has been posted a few months ago uh, adding uh, MUX support to Serdev. Uh, it's based on the new MUX subsystem and adds a reg property to these device tree nodes, which is the MUX index. There are some issues with this area. It's, it uh, doesn't do any flushing when it's switching from one uh, Serdev uh, client to the other, and there's no locking in those IO paths, so things will definitely break. Um, in this series, this is an example of a I2C controller driver. So you have an I2C controller connected over UART. Uh, it adds some basic parity support just to switch on parity checking, but again, Serda doesn't uh, propagate any errors of the stack, so you won't figure out if something went wrong. Um, another driver, an MFT driver for um, doing some kind of supervisory, um, uh, I think it's for an in-flight system. You have a watchdog backlog and, and uh, LED um, components, uh, and they are all accessed over this, this uh, supervisory processor, and it's implemented enough an MFT driver. And there's some earlier examples of a GPS and a Bluetooth slave device driver that was posted. Future work uh, would be obviously to address those quirks and limitations that I've listed, uh, specifically adding hot plug supports is the one that, that I care about. Uh, because I don't want to enable Serdev for USB serial before and this has been fixed. Um, and um, lifting the uh, limitation of only having a single slave would be good too. It may be possible to implement some kind of generic RS485 support uh, based on this, this MUX work, uh, but someone needs to dig into that because it's, it may be better to do this on a, with a dedicated driver. Uh, we have further uh, Bluetooth protocol drivers that can be converted. Uh, HI Intel is the top priority one because we now know that it's broken for ACPI. Uh, other line discipline drivers would be uh, for NFC. There's a line discipline driver for the CAN bus. Uh, the TI shared transport driver you can use now the Bluetooth component, but there are some, it's shared transport. So maybe 
the Moxin subsystem can be used here to get uh, these other components supported. Uh, I mentioned the CEC device, and there are other CRIO drivers that could probably benefit from CRDEV. And if you want to do some further studying on this, uh, I recommend looking at the code. Uh, it's only these three uh, files, basically. Include file and, and two files on the dev drivers TTY CRDEV. And it's not really that much code to, to process. Device trip bindings have been defined where they should. And there are bindings in there, the thing to watch out for. We've accepted bindings for things that aren't implemented yet. So you could have um, clock resources and so on being defined, but the driver won't actually use them yet. And if you want to um, read some more about the background about all this, there's an article by Neil Brown on LWN, which uh, was written while CERDA was being developed and sort of uh, uh, iterates some of the, the history and some of the concerns and some of the previous attempts at uh, doing this. Yeah, that was it. Thanks. <laughs> Any questions? So um, yeah. <clears throat> I have a few questions about runtime PM. You probably could correct me. Uh, any driver could try to use it, but it will not work. Correct? Uh, on, I, I, if I implement uh, in the each uh, slave or control driver. Only in us. Okay, so the, the second question is, um, uh, it does not cover console. I mean, kernel console is not covered by, by that. Okay, <laughs> and what about, what about DMA support? Could you elaborate a bit about DMA support? DMA? <laughs> I mean, that, that's something that's uh, dealt with by the underlying TTY driver. So, CERDEV wouldn't be involved in, in DMA at all. You'd only get your, when, when you know, when you have DMA interrupt triggers, you'd get your receive buffer being propagated up the stack through these callbacks I mentioned. Um, but CERDEV wouldn't be involved at that level. It's built on top of the serial drivers and on top of the TTY ports. So um, first of all about the history, the initial reason was the uh, Nokia driver that triggered everything because I tried to um, commit a driver similar to the Broadcom one and got a neck for that one. Um, and secondly about runtime power management, um, if you just enable runtime power management on the host controller independently of the slave and the slave tries to write something then might be missed. That's why it's currently not enabled. Because at least on OMAP, if you if you wake up um, from getting data on the serial line, then the first few bytes are missed, which might be a problem or might not be a problem. It depends on what is connected. So more thinking is required on that one. Yeah. But I mean, for OMAP, um, the um, runtime power management for the OMAP viewer driver, uh, that that for, first of all, it's always enabled. And when you don't have a runtime power management enabled for its child device, which would be the serial controller, this simply means that um, the child device's status won't be propagated up. It will still work. The, 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 the port is always on when it's open currently. <coughs> Any other questions? All right, thank you.